The movie starts at a disclosed location of a central intelligence agency black site where enhanced interrogation techniques are used on detainees. The United States government has committed its full resources to finding Osama bin Laden, who was the one who took responsibility for the attack on the Twin Towers. Two years after September 11, 2001, Maya, who is a Central Intelligence Agency analyst tasked with finding the Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, is currently stationed at the United States Embassy in Pakistan. At this moment, she is present with Central Intelligence Agency officer Dan Fuller to attend the interrogation of Amar. He is detained under the suspicion of having links to multiple of the hijackers in the September 11 attacks. The Central Intelligence Agency has evidence of a money trail between Amar and the hijackers. The interrogation is led by Dan, who repeatedly asks Amar to give him evidence on the Saudi group. This group is suspected of orchestrating an upcoming attack. He repeatedly waterboards him to get him to talk, but he doesn't budge. Back at the Central Intelligence Agency station in the United States Embassy, Maya is introduced to Joseph Bradley, the station chief, and other agency's analysts. They discuss potential leads on different Al-Qaeda leaders and the rumored locations of Osama bin Laden, but none of them were solid. They decide to focus on their current lead named Abu Faraj al-Libi, and they call it a night. The next day, Dan and Maya are back to Amar. They asked him similar questions, but there was no answer. Dan, along with two other men who wore masks, increased the level of torment. They take off his pants, tie his neck with a collar, and drag him. While they were about to put him in a tight box, he muttered some unreliable information. The information was random and vague, so the Central Intelligence Agency couldn't make anything out of them. On May 29, 2004, a group of gunmen entered a hotel in Kobar, Saudi Arabia, an open fire resulting in the death of American and Saudi Arabian nationals. Dan blames himself and May for the attack, but Jessica, another Central Intelligence Agency analyst, argues against it. During the argument, Maya came up with an idea. They trick Amar into believing that he is suffering from short-term memory loss due to sleep deprivation and that he cooperated with them and everything. They tell him after being sleep-deprived for 96 hours, he confessed the names of his brothers, and they were able to prevent the attack. The bluff works, and Amar begins to share the names of his accomplices. Hamza Rabia, Habab al-Masri, and Abu Ahmed. Jessica asks Amar for more details on Abu Ahmed, who was a personal courier for bin Laden. He told her that he was a computer guy, and he worked with Osama bin Laden. Next, Maya listens to hours and hours of tapes where different detainees are questioned about Abu Ahmed. Most of the detainees recognize the name, and they all claim to have seen him. Maya is taken by the fact that Abu Ahmed is recognized by at least 20 detainees. Then, she goes to see another detainee located in another Central Intelligence Agency black site. This detainee reveals that Abu Ahmed is a courier between bin Laden and Abu Faraj a senior member of Al-Qaeda. Maya brings this finding to Joseph Bradley, but he shuts her down after telling her that this was not an actionable intel to move forward. While the Central Intelligence Agency has yet to find any reliable intel, Al-Qaeda attacks are continuing throughout the world. This time, a double-decker bus exploded in London. Presently, Maya and Dan are advancing on their investigation. Maya contacts a top financier of Al-Qaeda, who confirms the information about Abu Ahmed being a courier between bin Laden and Abu Faraj. He also tells her that Abu Ahmed has disappeared after the 9-11 attack. Dan, on the other hand, has been able to capture Abu Faraj with the help of Pakistani intelligence officers. Maya interrogates Abu Faraj. He denies knowing about a courier named Abu Ahmed. Maya interprets his attempts to conceal the identity of Abu Ahmed as a confirmation of the importance of Abu Ahmed and Al-Qaeda. She further grills him using enhanced interrogation techniques, but she can't get him to talk. Maya takes a break and goes outside. She has a conversation with Dan. He tells her he is getting out of Pakistan soon, stating he has seen a lot of violence. He also tells her to be careful now that everyone knows her face. On the same night, she hung out with Jessica at the Marriott Hotel in Islamabad, Pakistan. Jessica tells her that maybe it is time to give up on Abu Ahmed, but Maya is still convinced about Abu Ahmed's connection with bin Laden. Then suddenly a truck bomb exploded in the hotel, killing a lot of people. But Maya and Jessica made it out alive. Some time after news of the attack has blown over, Jessica has a lead on a member of Al-Qaeda. She gets a report stating that the Jordanians have a highly placed mole inside Al-Qaeda. A Jordanian doctor named Humam Halil al-Balawi, who has sent a recording of a meeting between high-ranking members of Al-Qaeda as evidence. She plans to offer al-Balawi $25 million to become a spy for the United States. Brady Lee doesn't buy this, but he gives it a green light. The meeting is set, and on December 30, 2009, Jessica meets al-Balawi. Jessica was completely convinced that money was a huge huge motivating factor 
and his medical expertise made him an ideal candidate to treat bin Laden in the future. But it turns out he wasn't a mole, rather a devout member of Al-Qaeda who organized a conniving plan to lure out the Central Intelligence Agency. Jessica and several other Central Intelligence Agency officers are killed when Al Balawi denotes a suicide vest. This attack came to be known as the Camp Chapman attack, which was the worst attack on Central Intelligence Agency personnel in 25 years. This leaves Maya devastated. To make matters worse, Maya receives an intel from Saudi intelligence, a video of an interrogation showing a detainee telling his interrogator that Abu Ahmed died back in 2001 and that he buried him with his own hand. Maya vows to get revenge for her colleagues and kill bin Laden. An immediate meeting is held in the United States Embassy demanding targets as a retribution to the attack. While everything is tense in the office, Maya catches a break. One junior analyst brings her a lead by the name of Ibrahim Saeed, who traveled under the name of Abu Ahmed al-Kuwaiti. Maya realizes that Abu Ahmed might be still alive. She contacts Dan, who is now working in Langley. She tells him that the photograph that the Central Intelligence Agency used for Abu Ahmed is that of his brother, Habib, who looks identical to Ibrahim and who is also the one who died in 2001. Maya asks Dan to use all his connections to get the phone number of Saeed's mother. He goes to meet a Kuwaiti prince for information. He manages to convince the prince to give him the phone number in exchange for a yellow Lamborghini Gallardo Bicolore. The next day, Maya began monitoring the calls of Saeed's mother, but he never uses a cell phone. Instead, he calls from different payphones in two separate locations. Jack, a Central Intelligence Agency analyst, tracks Saeed and tells her to get a team on the ground, but she is not getting full cooperation. Bradley even tries to steer her away from her investigation after a bombing occurred in New York at Times Square. After pleading that stopping bin Laden is the key to stopping every attack, she fiercely confronts Bradley and gives him an ultimatum to give her a team or to get her back to the United States, and Joseph Bradley gives in to her demands. After a long day, May hears some good news. Jack has been able to clone the payphone, which enables her to listen to his conversation directly. Maya and her team have been able to pinpoint the origin of the calls to two distinct places, Peshawar and Rawalpindi. They keep following the signal, but it leads them into a crowded market or difficult places where the Pakistani thugs confront white people. Jack tells Maya that Saeed makes calls from different places, making it difficult for him to establish any pattern. In other news, Joseph Bradley has been pulled out of Afghanistan after accusations of using drone strikes on innocent and civilians were made by the victims' families. A new Central Intelligence Agency chief is appointed, and Maya is determined now more than ever. They diligently track the signal to a white sport utility vehicle, and were able to take a picture. Maya has the support of the new Central Intelligence Agency chief, and she deploys many native informants on the road. This has enabled the team to further narrow their search area. One morning, while leaving her residence in Pakistan, Maya is attacked by armed men. She survives the attack because of the bulletproof glasses on her car. After the attack, her boss told her it would be better if she left Pakistan, stating that she is now on Al-Qaeda's list. He promises to continue the investigation while she travels home. The team has now tracked Saeed to a compound in Abbottabad. Maya is back to Langley, where the whole team is now solely focused on the compound. The Central Intelligence Agency director has been briefed, and he tells the team to identify the residents in the compound. 52 days have passed but there was no conclusive result. However, the team has identified a missing member of the family in the compound. There are three women and two men. The third male member of the family is completely out of sight. The team believes it is more than likely to be bin Laden. They present their findings to the National Security Advisor, but there is no definitive evidence that it is bin Laden. He tells them to find him some evidence. After a few days passed in argument, the National Security Advisor tasked the Central Intelligence Agency to devise a plan to capture or kill bin Laden. The Central Intelligence Agency devises a plan to use two stealth helicopters, which are built to avoid radar detection, with SEAL Team 6 members who are trained for special missions like this. Maya briefs them on the mission, but they don't agree since she couldn't say with actual certainty that bin Laden was there. A final meeting is held with the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, where every Central Intelligence Agency official estimates that there is a 60 to 80 percent chance that bin Laden is there. But Maya places a hundred percent confidence in the assessment of bin Laden's presence. On May 1, 2011, Maya, who was socializing with the SEAL Team 6 members, received a call confirming the mission had a green light and was going to happen within few hours. Maya was in disbelief. This mission was going to be conducted in stealth, 
and the United States was going to be operating without the knowledge of the Pakistani government. That night, the team took off in the two stealth helicopters from the forward operating base in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Then the team successfully crossed Pakistan's borders with no chatter reported on Pakistani communications. Now, the team has reached the compound. One of the helicopters successfully landed, but the other went down. No team member was injured, and after the operational helicopter transported the second team from the crash site to the drop site, the mission was still a go. The team started to sweep every room doing door-to-door -door searches. One of the soldiers was about to plant an explosive on one of the doors, but shots were fired. The soldiers fired back and killed Ibrahim Saeed. The second team breaches into one of the doors and kills Osama bin Laden's brother, Abrar, and his wife. Meanwhile, the neighbors have woken up and started to walk to the compound. Hakim, an Arabic-speaking member of the SEAL team, begs the neighbors to get back to save their lives, but the neighbors don't listen. On the other hand, the team has finally reached its target. They repeatedly shot and killed the person they suspected to be Osama bin Laden. They took his picture and began searching and collecting every piece of electronic hardware they could find. The SEAL team member who shot bin Laden is pretty excited but was ordered to continue to work. The team has been given four minutes to clear out after communication chatters start to come out announcing that the Pakistanis have alerted their air force and they are on the way. The team put the suspected deceased person in a body bag and Hakem was tasked with placing explosives on the helicopter that crashed. They blow up the helicopter to prevent it from falling into foreign hands. After completing the mission, they flew back to the base with the body. The team is back at the base and they place the body for final inspection, which leaves Maya in disbelief. They also carefully arrange hard drives, CDs, DVDs, and hard copy files and log them according to their classifications. Finally, Maya confirms the identity of the corpse and the team celebrates the win. At the end of the movie, Maya is seen boarding a military transport back to the United States. She was the only passenger. When asked when she wants to go, she begins to cry. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.